Hi, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you 10 things that I really like about the Audi e-tron. Now, you've probably watched a few reviews on this car if you've got an interest in the e-tron, but I suspect most of the things I'm gonna show you now aren't going to be in those reviews. Let's get cracking. So first is the top-down camera view. This is really handy for parking especially if you're going forward. Let me show you what it can do first. So on the left hand side there, you've got an image of the car. So on, on the other screen, you can have like a 360 representation of the vehicle, which is kind of good. I think I would say that's slightly pointless and it's all out of perspective. So that's my garage door in front of the car. It's nowhere near as big as that makes it look. Um, and then over here, behind the car is this massive white car which in real life is a Volkswagen e-golf so actually a lot smaller but this is about things that are really good so let me show you how this works when you're parking and because the each one is, is quite a big car it sits somewhere between the Q5 and the Q7 going into parking spaces especially forward is a little bit tricky because you can't see the corners but as you can see here as I put into this space the, the actual camera vision um, that the car's given me and the representation of the car makes it a lot easier to park this car. In fact, really easy to park this car. So the next thing I really love about this car is the build quality. It really is second to none. Let me show you around and you'll see what I mean. Everything in here is just superb. It, all the gaps are great. The build quality is great. The finish is superb. Look at the steering wheel. Look at that stitching around there. There has been a lot of time and effort spent on the interior of this car, making it a really high quality place to be. You've got your three displays. You've got the bottom one, the middle one, and also the virtual cockpit. Uh, I won't talk about the wing mirrors, the virtual wing mirrors, not in this video. This video is about things I like. <laughs> that gives you a clue. Uh, but the seats, look, this car has been put together very, very well. Next is a feature that every parent will be grateful for. So if you've got little kids, you probably use the child locks on the back. This is fine, however, when somebody else gets in the car, they can't get out, and then you have to get out of the car and let them in. So normally you set the child lock up by um, getting the key, and then you put the key in a little slot in the door, and then it, it, it kind of puts the child lock on, not in the Audi e-tron. So check this out. You've got two buttons here, and these are for the child locks on the back doors. Let me show you what I mean. So there's the back door, as you can see easily opened. If I press that button there and go back to this door, the child locks on. I mean, that is just so simple and yet so clever. Being able to control the child locks actually from the driver's seat, I mean, it just makes so much sense. Why don't more cars do this? Audi, well done. You've pulled a blinder with this one. I'm really impressed with this. Right, before I go on, I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, you can help me out and help the channel out and help spread the word about electric vehicles by just hitting the like button. If you've got an interest in electric vehicles uh, and more videos on the Audi e-tron, I've got quite a few, then hit the subscribe button uh, and also the bell and you'll be notified as they come up. So the next one I'm gonna try and explain to you, but it's to do with the adaptive cruise control. So the adaptive cruise control on this car is really, really good. So we drive an e-Golf, which has got um, really good adaptive cruise control. I've also got a Tesla Model S, um, which kind of, for the most part, just can drive itself. I would say the Audi adaptive cruise control, oh, I don't like saying it because I love my Tesla. I would say the Audi adaptive cruise, I can't get the words out. Oh, it's a bit better in some respects. There, I've said it. Let me explain what I mean. So, for instance, if you're driving along um, on a dual carriageway and there's a car in front of you, 
uh, and that car um, pulls off onto a slip road off the dual carriageway. The Audi is just superb at managing that situation. It's watching the car. When the car's sort of 70% off, it knows and it then starts to kind of, uh, not, not accelerate, but it manages the speed so that as the car's left, it's then bringing you back up to the speed uh, that you've set the adaptive cruise control for. for. I mean, I do love my Tesla, but the Tesla is overcautious, and a lots of cars I've driven are overcautious. So that car's left this, the, the uh, dual carriageway, and your car's still slowing down to the to the point where it's actually perhaps slightly dangerous for the cars behind you. So Audi, superb. If someone changes lanes in front of you, it's just such a relaxed and proficient adapted cruise control system. The other thing I've probably done about sort of three or 400 miles in this car now, no phantom braking. If you don't know what phantom braking is, it's when you've got adaptive cruise control on, the car sees a bridge or a shadow or who knows what it's seeing and just slams on the brakes. It's quite annoying. This car has, hasn't done it. It's got nowhere near actually doing it. The Tesla do it, does it, and the e-Golf does it. I don't think this car would do it. It must do it under some conditions. But the adaptive cruise control on this car is just superb. Next is comfort. This is a really comfortable place to be. The air suspension is, is well, second to none. You could spend a lot of miles in this car on a lot of British roads and uh, not get annoyed. It is just such a comfortable place to be. So there are various settings for the actual driving. You've got efficiency, comfort, auto, dynamic. Within all of those, you can um, kind of change uh, the suspension height, etc. cetera. Um, efficiency is best for range. Comfort is comfortable on a straight road. Uh, I find dynamic the best. The reason for that is this is um, a big car, a big heavy car. So dynamic seems to um, get rid of the wallowing. It makes it more like, like an X5 or a, a Porsche KN type kind of handling. So it's kind of stiff, comfortable, but you're not, you're not rolling about. This is a comfortable car. Next is I love the fact you can drop the back seats from the boot. If you're a parent or you regularly take stuff around, we all know what it's like. You open the boot, you realize that you've not got enough room. You then have to open both doors at the back to then get the seats down so you can put your stuff in, shut the doors, go back around the back. The Audi system is very good. Let me show you. So that. electronic boot, of course, I've got a few things in the boot here. But what you can do is just pull that. I'll just pull that, try and get it all in. There goes that seat, pull that. There goes that seat. This is how all cars should be. Next is the double charge ports. This is really handy. So there's my charger. It's on a sh fairly short lead as you can see. Because this car's got charge ports on either side, if you're visiting somebody or using, uh, say, a, a charger in a supermarket, it's just dead easy to, uh, to use them. Here's the other side, so th this has actually got a really long lead, this one, but if I had a short lead again, it wouldn't reach the other side. But it does reach this side. And also, as I'm sure you'll agree, the way that those charging ports open as well, it's just a thing of beauty. It's also fast for a car of this weight and size. I think it weighs uh, 2,400 kilos or something like that. It is a heavy car. The 0 to 60 on it is 5.7 seconds. So when you floor it, especially from a standing start, you really feel the power. Now, coming from a Tesla, uh, it doesn't feel really, really like super quick, but it is quick. You're gonna surprise a lot of people off the line with something this big and heavy with a 0 to 60 of 5.7 seconds. Also, if you're a boy racer and you've had kids and now you've got a family or a girl racer, it's also got launch control. Next, and um, one thing I really like about this car is it just looks like a normal Audi. Unless you know a lot about kind of Audis or electric cars, you're probably not gonna know it's electric. It 
fits in really well with their range. Uh, I mean, I love electric vehicles. We've got nine from cars to personal electric vehicles. Um, and some EVs can be a little bit quirky looking. Um, for instance, when the Nissan Leaf came out, that's an unusual looking car. Um, it can put buyers off. So if you're trans transitioning from an ICE car, a car of an internal combustion engine, to an EV, then this just looks like a normal Audi. It's, it's going to be a really easy transition for you. Now, another thing that's exceptionally good in this car is the screens. Let me show you what I mean. So the contrast and brightness on these screens is like really good. I love the virtual cockpit. Uh, this top screen is very good. The bottom screen is good. Really easy and bright and a bit of reflection on them at the moment, but really easy to see. So lastly, the tailgate. So when you open the tailgate, as you can see, it does go pretty high, which is really good for loading, but not so good if you're in a multi-story car park or you've got a carport or it's um, anything overhanging really, you're gonna end up damaging your boot. So what you can do is when you're opening it, when it's at the height you want, you just stop it by pressing the button. And if this is the normal height you want it to be, so if you always want it to open at this height, press and hold. I don't know if you heard that, but that's fixed that to always open at that height. Let me show you what I mean. Right, let's open it again. Before it was about there. This time it stopped at a lower level. You've still got this much to go if it opened to full height. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you're thinking about buying an e-tron, they are really, really good vehicles. If you've got an e-tron, then please use the comments to tell me about things you really like about your e-tron as well. Uh, I've got several videos on the e-tron coming out over the next few weeks. I have got a video about the things I don't like about the e-tron. Yeah, sorry about that. But I suggest you watch that one as well. Until next time, I'll put some more videos around me, including the playlist for the uh, e-tron the e videos. See you next time.